Hello. In this video, I will go over how to analyze a MAG3 renogram using PMRI. Our main objective is to calculate split renal function. Let's begin. I start by dragging and dropping an anonymized case from my local hard drive onto the local studies page. You can also import cases from a network PAX connection, which is covered in another video. Let's select the study and load the correct set of images. The MAG3 analysis in PMRI is compatible with standard multi-frame nuclear medicine images as described in the DICOM standard. You can read more about it on this website. Let's look at two common data scenarios. In this study, the images were reconstructed at several temporal resolutions and saved into the same series. I select the correct series and then check for the correct number of frames in each of the four files in the series. I know that our scan is broken up into two phases. The first phase captures frames every second for one minute for a total of 60 frames. The second phase captures frames every 30 seconds for one hour for another 120 frames. Therefore, I'm looking for a file that will have a total of 180 frames. The left slider, or mouse wheel, changes the DICOM image inside the series, while the right slider, or control and mouse wheel, changes the frame. The first image here has 60 frames, so that's not it. The next one has 20. The third one also has 20. Finally, the last one has the correct 180 number of frames. I make sure that this image is selected while I right-click on the series and choose Renal Scintigraphy from the menu. The case is loaded and is ready to be analyzed, but let's look at another example first. Click Local Studies from the Views menu or press Ctrl-1 to go back to the Local Studies page. Here is another MAC3 scanned with a different protocol. This one does not have multiple reconstructions saved in the same series, so that makes our job easier. Select the correct series, right-click on it, and select Renal Scintigraphy from the menu. We are now ready to begin the analysis. There are many different ways to analyze a MAG3 scan. This particular analysis is based on how we interpret these scans at my hospital. To do the full analysis, we will need to define five regions of interest. These are the right and left kidney, the right and left background regions, and the bladder. I like to use a temporal MIP to do this. Press M to generate the MIP. This way, we don't have to guess about the optimal time point to use as a guide. Next, right-click on the ROI Tools menu and select the 3D Region Growing tool. Let's set our active ROI to right kidney by clicking here. Click inside the right kidney to drop a seed. Raise the minimum threshold until you get the entire kidney. That looks pretty good. Let's do the same for the left. Set the active ROI to the left kidney and drop another seed, this time inside the left kidney. Let's adjust the threshold a little bit. Now, let's do the same thing for the bladder. Let's define the two background regions. For this example, I'm going to use the same background region for both the left and right kidney. This is just one of many possible ways to do this. Please use the method you feel is most appropriate for your cases. I set the active ROI to background right. Next, I switch the ROI tool to circular mode by pressing 3 repeatedly. I'm going to paint two small regions below the kidneys on both sides, like so. Finally, I'm going to copy and paste my selection into the background left region. I select Copy from the background right ROI menu, and then switch my active ROI to background left. Finally, I select Paste from the background left ROI menu. These kinds of operations are covered in more detail in another video. We're almost done with the analysis. The last thing left to do is to fill in the calyceal and renal transit times. I turn off the MIP by pressing M and hide the ROI overlays by dragging the overlay slider down to zero. Right click on the ROI toggle buttons to bring up the excretion menu. Now I'm going to scroll through the images until I can see the collecting system. I see it here for both the right and left kidney, so I will click CTT for both. Next, let's look for the ureters. Make sure to adjust the brightness and contrast with the window and leveling tool while doing so. Here I see it on the left, and here I see it on the right. Let's press Ctrl S to save our analysis for later recall, and let's look at the results. Press the page navigation button, or press Ctrl 4 to go to the curves page. We can see that the patient was taken off the table at 40 minutes, so let's change the plot range to exclude points after 40 minutes. Let's look at some plotting options. We can switch between total counts and average counts. The face button 
lets us switch between the various phases of the study. Here we have two phases. Left click to toggle on and off and right click to switch between phases. As you can see, the first minute of the curves is on a counts per second scale, while the rest of the scan is on a counts per minute scale. Click the per second button to have the entire curve be on a counts per second scale. Finally, we can toggle background subtraction on and off with the background button. Let's move on to the tabulated results by clicking the page navigation button or pressing Control 5. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there are a few different methods to calculate split function. This results table is based on how we do things at my place of work. Split function is defined as the ratio of total counts between 1 and 2 minutes. The function per unit area is the ratio of total counts between 1 and 2 minutes divided by the area of the ROI. Counts are the total counts adjusted by background. If you want more specifics, including what the background counts are, click the parameters button. CTT is the time at which we first saw the collecting system. RTT is the time at which we first saw the ureters. Time to peak is the time it takes the curve to reach its maximum value. T75 is the time it takes for the curve to drop from the peak to 75% of the maximum value. T1 half is the time it takes the curve to drop from the peak to 50% of the maximum value. Let's take some screenshots and make a new DICOM series. We can do this by selecting Screenshot DICOM from the File Save menu or pressing Shift D. I will get five total screenshots. First, the results table. Next, let's get the total counts per second versus time. Now, let's just get Phase 1. Let's go back to the Analysis page, make a MIP by pressing M, and get a screenshot of the ROI overlays. Finally, let's turn the overlays off change the color table and take another screenshot. Go to the results page and click on screenshots. Select all of our images, right click and save DICOM series. Let's go to the local studies page and take a look. Here we can rename the series to whatever we want and send it to PAX. This is covered in more detail in another video. We're done with the analysis, but before ending the video, let's compare the results we got here with an MR urogram that this patient also had a few weeks after this scan. On the left, we have the enhancement curves from the MRU, and on the right, we have the total counts versus time curve from the MAC3 that we just looked at. These look pretty different, but maybe not if we look at them from the same perspective. What do I mean by that? Well, the first major difference is that the MAC3 scan is 40 minutes long, while the MRU one is only 8 minutes. Let's start with that. Now, the MRU curves are average enhancement per unit tissue all on the same relative scale. To approximate that with the MAG3 scan, we need to switch to average counts and counts per second. Okay, it's looking a little better, but there's one more major difference. The MRU curves are coming only from the parenchyma, while the MAG3 curves are from the entire kidney, including the collecting system. Let's bypass that issue by only looking at the first two minutes from both scans. Now, both curves look very close, but there's still a difference. We can see the MRU curve start to plateau while the MAC3 curve keeps rising. That's most likely due to the timing of Lasix administration. For MRUs, we give Lasix prior to injecting contrast, while for MAC3 scans, Lasix is administered approximately 20 minutes into the scan. This will also affect all transit times between the two modalities. Finally, let's discuss how split function is calculated. For MRUs, we calculate the path lag plots from the enhancement curves to get a split function per unit tissue. We take approximately one minute of MRU data to get these values. For MAG3, we take the total counts and calculate the ratio to get the function. We take one minute of MAG3 data to get these values. To compare the two functions, we need to look at VPDRF from MRU, which is covered in another video, and compare it to the split function from the analysis we just did. I hope you found this video helpful, and thank you for watching.